it. That would not be good. All right, we are recording. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us on this a lovely morning. Um, you know, Susan and Nicole and I are just so pumped that you all just came together just to, you know, fill your cups up and learn and grow. And I have to say, I just came off of my leaders conference. We had 61 here. I pa partnered with Sarah Rankin this past weekend, and I'm still on a high. I've tried to write on Facebook the words to describe what happened this weekend and the transformation that took place. But um, you know, it's been hard to do that. It was just, it's been absolutely perfect. And I can't wait to share some nuggets with you all today, just from the inspiration that I have from within. And um, I know Nicole and Susan and I are just so excited to share kind of our stories and then really answer your questions. You guys gave us some really awesome questions and it's good to know um, where, where you're at, what you want to know that always helps us as leaders. So, um, Susan, let's start with you, mama. Okay. So like two minute story, right? Two minutes power through. Okay. Um, so I started this business five years ago. Um, oh my gosh, today's my five year anniversary. I just realized that. Yay. Okay. Um, so five years and, um, I used to be a registered nurse. My husband was working. We were both working. I was looking for a way to be a stay at home mom. Cause I hated my job, but there was no, you know, I didn't know anything like this existed. And, um, after I tried the wrap, like I was absolutely blown away by my results. And even though I was super skeptical of the whole thing, I decided to sign up, even though my husband wasn't very supportive. And I just wrapped people like crazy. Wrap, wrap, wrap. I didn't go Ruby till my third month, but something happened. I'm sorry, Chaney. Something happened on my fourth month where I just, you know, I was getting those distributors coming in and I filled my chart to double diamond. I went double diamond to the end of my fourth month. And within a year, I was a top money earner. Um, all I did was just teach people to go Ruby over and over and over. Um, my husband and I paid off over $350,000 in debt. Um, that includes most of our mortgage. Um, we live in a brand new house. Uh, we've been here for almost four years now. And um, I mean, our lives are completely changed. My husband's home. I'm home. Um, we have four babies now. One is almost five weeks old. Um, we have a, a one-year-old, a three-year-old, and a five-year-old. And um, I love this business because I can work from anywhere and I can look like this and it doesn't matter. <laughs> and it doesn't. And Susan, you're killing it. I mean, girl, five weeks. I get through that story pretty fast. I tried. <laughs> you did. You did an amazing job. Okay. I'm going to share mine because I want Nicole to go last. So um, for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm, I'm Kay Souter Dixon now. I'm married. I've been married since May to my amazing husband, Scott. And I was first introduced to It Works when I was 12 years old. So my mom is the reason, the, the reason why It Works was discovered because she discovered the rats when I was 12, 17 years ago. So, you know, when I had her at our leaders conference this weekend, I was, I said to the room, I said, you all realize that we would not be in this room if it weren't for mom discovering the rap. And it was just one of those aha moments for me, just to reiterate the fact that we are so we have the most incredible dangling carrot by having this product because no one else in the world has this incredible wrap. And now of course the keto coffee. But um, so my journey was a little different because I got, I got introduced to it so young and I was always just mom's cheerleader. Yay, 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 mom. But when I was in college, the economy crashed and all of my friends, I mean, I'm not exaggerating. They were getting out of school, graduating, couldn't get jobs. They were stressed out financially. They were going back to school thinking that by the time they went through graduate school, they'd at least maybe be able to get a, a job in their field. And they were in going into debt, student loan debt. And it was just a spiraling down. And I had been to so many at works events. I had been to one team, one missions and boot camps and followed mom on the road just as her cheerleader, been to rap parties, seen the rap cash and heard the stories, but finally thought, you know what, if, if I could do this on my own and make a couple extra hundred dollars a month, if I could, then what would life look like when I graduate college in 12 months? Maybe I wouldn't have to be so fearful like my friends were. So in 12 months, you guys, I partied like crazy. I mean, this is before social media. We did not have Instagram when I joined at works. Okay. Um, I partied like crazy. I was in the homes. I was at gyms and spas and salons and doing everything I possibly could to get face to face, belly to belly with people. And in 12 months, I to um, 
double diamond, but I was making five figures a month. I was making about 10 grand a month at 20 two years old when I graduated college and decided, Hey, you know what? I'm going full time. I'm going to be a rap girl. And my, my destiny I thought was to be a fashion merchandiser and to travel the world internationally, um, buying clothes. And I am so glad that my path changed and that I found it works with for me and in my own heart. So that's, um, that's how I got started. And then of course, um, ambassador diamond millionaires club, it's been almost ten, uh, almost nine years. It'll be nine years in January since I joined. So, Nicole, you go, girl. I love that. Um, my story. I only I joined so that I could have the body wraps um, at discounted price. Like I was like, I want to be able to like have control of like what I purchased. Didn't really understand the customer program, and um, I remember saying like, I bet I could find like a couple girls that want to like tighten their you know thighs or arms or whatnot. We live in Florida, so we're always in shorts. And, um, whenever I first, uh, try to rap, we did not do it the right way. So, um, I literally had like a peg leg and that's when I was like, okay, this works because I could totally tell the difference between one leg and the other. Um, and so I was, I worked full time in the medical field and I'd just gone back to school to get a, my second bachelor's in child psychology. Cause that's my passion. I love kids. Um, or, and so I was like, I'll just go to school, be a child psychologist. It'll just work out. I was sick of like the one vacations a year. Uh, you know, scraping every month just for a date night. Like we got married super, super young. So we, all we knew was to work, work hard. That's all we knew. Um, and so I remember I started getting customers pretty quickly. Cause I'm, if I love something, I'll tell everybody about it. And I remember telling my husband, I'm like, I think that this is like going to take off. Is that okay? And he was like, huh? go, like go for it, do whatever you need to do, work as hard as you want. And so I too partied. Um, I worked over 40 hours and I was in school full time and I actually did two majors because you know that's what you do. And so I actually went double diamond my first year and then I ended up going to conference just because I heard that's what double diamonds did. Um, I actually had no idea. I went to conference with a black tank top and like a little jacket, didn't even have any gear or anything. Um, and then something just happened to me at that conference where I saw the vision of corporate. I saw what could happen with this opportunity. I literally told my husband, I'll be right back. I went to the store. I loaded up on so much gear and I came back in and sat down and told him, I was like, I'm going to go triple. Um, and as soon as I do, like I'm done. And he's like, if you go triple, you can go ahead and leave your job. And that's all that he had to say. And one month after conference, I went triple and I quit my job, finished school. Cause I don't ever quit anything. I start. Um, but I was able to do this full time as I finished school. And I literally finished with like the best grades because I wasn't stressed about a job or anything like that. And then I'll never forget when I was graduating, everybody was so stressed about finding jobs. And here I had this piece where I'm like, I already have like my career, like I'm, I'm you know, I'm a rap girl. Um, and so this is really just for me. My degree was just for me. Um, and the rest is history. Like, I can't wait. Like I tell Susan and Kay all the time, I'm like, we get to be, you know, eventually stay at home mamas. Um, you know, we get to do this life and we're so blessed for this opportunity. Absolutely. And you know what? Um, I'm always inspired. I hope you guys know, like, Neither one of us are tied together in the same business. We are sideline sisters and we support and love each other. And you know, that's what these Zooms are about. This is about you guys taking home something that is gonna inspire you and impact you to go do the work that you need to do to go to the next level. And that's how Susan and Nicole and I feel about each other. It's just a beautiful relationship that we've developed as friends and you know, business partners in a way. And just to, just to take home what, take home today absorb what you need and go implement it. And that's, that's our objective for you. So you guys have provided us with the questions that you need. And so we're going to get through this. I know we're moving fast because we want to respect your time today because we are getting together in the morning. So we're going to answer your questions this morning. Um, so um, let's see, my husband bought me a new computer because mine crashed and I don't have my notes app yet. So let me pull up my text from Susan with the questions. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what number, like, you know, what's so interesting to me is one of the, the tip top questions in this whole platform, you guys, is how to seal the deal. And I think that's from loyal customers to distributors. Um, and right now, I mean, I always talk about this season being seed planting season. This is the season where you guys will explode your businesses going into conference next year by really focusing on talking to as many people as you possibly can. So girls, let's go through and talk about really, I mean, what are your best tips on sealing the deal and, and sealing that customer or distributor? Um, I'll just say, I get the question a lot, like, how do you do it? 
And I think a lot of people assume when I add a new distributor that I talked to them that day and they signed up. And that is not the case for me, like 99% of the time. Um, like you said, it is planting seeds. So I think patience is a huge tip um, with sealing the deal. Um, don't give up on people. Um, so I, it's all about personal relationships for me. So um, I send a lot of voice memos. I want them to hear my voice. I want them to hear my heart. Um, yes, I do have scripts available, obviously, for my team that I use, but you have to feel the conversation. Um, you have to let them ask questions and, and don't give them something that they haven't asked. So when I'm talking to like, let's say a potential distributor, um, I want to get to know them. Like one of the first things I ask them is what type of income are you looking for? Like I want to know their story. And so when I do follow up with them, like I'll, I'll talk about something that maybe they told me, you know, they're having a baby in six weeks or a lot of them are, you know, on maternity leave or something like that. So I make sure they know that I know that story, that little piece about them. So they don't think I'm just someone on their list. Um, and voice memos help with that a lot. Um, following up is, is crucial, but as far as sealing the deal, like making sure that happens, like I'm very direct with them. And sometimes I'll even say things like, listen, I followed up with you about five times now. Um, if you aren't interested in this, like, please let me know and I'll take you off the list. And it's crazy how them thinking I'm taking them off my list. They immediately are like, no, 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 wait, like I'm ready to give this a shot. Um, so those are just a few tips. I'm trying to like get through this fast so y'all can also share y'all. Nicole, I would say, Nicole, you're consistent, a top and roller, you know, and what, what would you say would be your number one tip? And I'm the same with Susan, when some, when I enroll someone or I, you know, I'm top enroller for the month, I think people are like, oh, she must ask them once. Like some people I follow up with for years, y'all. Like I never give up on anyone. Um, and I always pray people into my business and I pray them out. Um, but one big thing too, is I always, same as Susan, I make those connections. And so for example, I've got this precious girl, I, we've been talking for months. Um, and I just stay connected with her just because I like to form somewhat of like a little friendship with them. So that I'm not just this girl behind a screen. Um, and then I like to do a lot of FaceTimes. I FaceTime Kay all the time. I'm like, Ding -ding. and then like, I'm like, Hey, um, just because I love that. Just being able to connect face to face. I feel like we lose a lot of that with building on social media and it being, you know, 2017, everything's like text and this and all that. And I feel like we've lost that side of relationships where you can connect on the phone even, um, and FaceTime. So that's my big thing is I always, always get them on the phone and feel like, Hey, I'm considering doing this. It just, I love voice memos too, but just getting them on the phone and being like, what time can you chat? I want to kind of go through everything with you. And I always say to make sure this is going to be a good fit for you because the truth of the matter is not everyone should be a distributor. We've got a customer program that's amazing. And some people do fit that criteria better than being a distributor. So I always like to kind of distinguish which way they want to go. Absolutely. And I, you know, I was looking through this, I enrolled a girl this weekend and we've been talking for since uh, late September. And so same thing, we first started talking on Instagram and then I always, you know, I always like to get their phone number. I'll say, Hey, what's your cell? And I'll voice message you or what's your Facebook and I'll voice message you if they don't have an iPhone so that I can give them, you know, my voice and I can, they can hear my inflection. And it's really the same thing. I try to just be relate as relatable as I possibly can to what's going on in their life now and where they want to go and show them that they can get to where they want to go and really help them believe that build that belief system in themselves. Um, if I can get them on the phone, great. If I can't, voice message is awesome and we, we utilize it to a full advantage. Um, and then something that I learned from Susan a long time ago, Susan, I'm so grateful for this, is just to be fun with them, be friendly with them. You know, like this one girl, like this girl right now that just joined, she was kind of, she kind of went MIA and then I sent her a funny um, GIF or whatever you say it. And she just loved it. She was like cracking up and she's like, all right, I'm getting on right now. And she literally got online and joined. And it was just because I guess she felt like I'm a human being. Right. And, and I mean, that. it really is. That's a lot. They think that we're like computers. I swear I get asked, especially if I meet them on my business page, they think I'm like a computer. <laughs> Sometimes I'll send them something and they're like, are you real? And yeah. I'm like, Yes. Like I laugh at them. I'm like, yes, I'm real. And I'll send like selfies of myself, like in my pajamas. <laughs> um, what I was wanting to add is sealing the deal. Um, also 
can tie into how to retain your loyal customers because, or that personal relationship with sealing the deal. Um, because when I sign up a customer on that third month, like they're in my calendar, like that's how I stay organized. They're in my calendar, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Um, on that third month, like I send them a message or a voice memo that's like, Hey, how are you loving these products? I think your mom like posted, how are, how are you loving these products? And then you know, loyal customers are the best distributors. Mm -hmm. So if they're not interested in like continuing to order, which you can get a feel for as you're talking to them, which retaining, you want to get them on greens because they're going to love greens monthly. They're going to get, they're going to fall in love with the keto coffee, coffee. They're going to want that monthly. So get them on products, maybe not necessarily wraps, something that they're going to want monthly. That is how to retain. But if I can tell they're about to turn their ship off, that's when I go straight into, Hey, you obviously like these products. I know you're not going to cancel your account, but you're not interested in ordering. What would you think about earning extra income? And I'm telling you, if I can get a loyal customer to upgrade to a distributor, those are my distributors that are on my chats participating. They are loving the business. They're ready to order their gear. They're just like ready to rock and roll. And so if you're not getting them to continue their monthly order, at least try to go into that next conversation on, okay, why aren't you wanting to order? Is it a money issue? Oh, well, have you ever thought about making money with me? And again, you're going to talk to them like that. You're going to talk to them like, Hey girl, what do you think about having fun with me? Meeting new friends. Like you're going to talk to them like they are your friend. If you talk to them like a computer or like a salesperson and try to be too professional, it turns them off. And I think a lot of times, you know, people that come from, Amway, Mary Kay, a lot of these network marketing companies that used to be in like years and years ago, they always taught wear your name tag, wear your suit, put a slick bun in your hair and go to these doctor's offices or whatever it is. That's what you think of when you think of network marketing. It works as different. Show them that we're different. We're not super professional. We want you in your pajamas. If you're a stay at home mom being able to work on your phone, let them know that. And then one quick tip, that your mom kind of brought up when we were at Nashville boot camp. Some people are scared of social media, you guys. They're absolutely terrified and they've seen their friends post to Facebook about it works and then they quit a week later. Be sure that you let them know, hey, if you're not interested in doing social media, let's talk about how you can do it works in person. And Pam actually told me that they were signing new distributors up because they knew they didn't have to be a social media it works girl. A lot of people are intimidated by that. So give people options, especially that older generation. They are absolutely terrified with social media. Yep. I love that. One thing too, that I always like to tell people too, is that this business is not a one size fits all. You really just customize it. Like you said, Susan, if you don't want to do social media, then go grow your network another way. Um, I love to tell people too, like how I, whatever works for you. Um, the beauty of this business is that it's not a one size fits all. You can customize this business to fit your lifestyle, your personality, your peers, and that's, what's going to make you successful. You know, I think we talked about this, this a little bit this weekend, just on our, like, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, not one-on-ones, but kind of in our team, you know, sessions that we were just sitting around by the campfire, if you will. And just talking, you know, I think that people, people misconstrue what they, when they think about you're building your business on social media, they think like you're posting. Mm -hmm. They think you're posting and you're looking cute and you've got this, you know, system down. They don't realize all the work that it takes behind that. They don't realize the discipline. They don't realize the time management. They don't realize that you're running it like a business, you know, just the same way as if I were all belly to belly and in the field, I would be trying to program one or two wrap parties a week. I would be trying to program two, maybe three, maybe four vendor events a month maybe an expo. I would be doing, I would be out blitzing on a consistent basis, intentionally blitzing, not just out while I'm running my errands. I would be doing focused, intentional work on field development. But when you're like, when you're working social media, I don't think that you all realize it takes that discipline and, and, and that scheduling of how you're going to, you know, put those posts out there and, and at what time and when, and, and what's that post going to look like? And then your follow-up and spending all that time you know what I'm saying? Paying attention to really paying attention to your social media accounts. It's not just posting. And I think that, that it's important for you guys to understand that no matter how you build your business, it's a discipline. And we're talking in a little bit about, 
how much time you should be spending into your d daily business to go to that ambassador level. And I think many of you are confused on what to do. And I, and I realized that this weekend is some are just going, sometimes I don't know what to do, but I want to do the right things. And we want to be able to help you with that. So um, when I interviewed my top enrollers from last month on a Zoom, there were about three out of the five that said that the majority of their enrollments for that month were existing customers mm -hmm. they had followed up with. So I just wanted to say like reiterating what Susan was talking about is following up with those potential or those existing loyals is tremendous. And I think it's because they have an existing relationship with the product. You know, it's, I feel like longevity in this business comes from having a relationship with the culture of the company. It comes from having a relationship with the product, getting results with the products, being consistent with your use of the products. Those of you that use them on a regular basis, you love them. And just like me, I was a customer way before I joined. I had this wonderful relationship with the products. And if you're not building that relationship, then how are you going to be passionately talking about it? And I think that that all goes full circle as well. Absolutely. And I think that kind of ties into one other thing on our list is um, not only having a relationship with the products, but having a relationship with the people. And this isn't necessarily um, your upline. This isn't necessarily the person who enrolled you. I think being a part of the team page or a team chat and figuring out someone that you bond with and someone that can hold you accountable, having that accountability partner. I mean, like Kay opened up with, we are not on the same team. I actually like knew of Kay for over a year or two and I wasn't able to get to know her. And as soon as I did, I was like this girl's like my soul sister same thing with Nicole and so if you find that person that's also or find those people for your new distributors okay so by putting them in in chats or getting them to events once they find that person the um they're not going to quit as much. Um, your turnover rate's not going to be as, as big because you're going to have these people that are like, okay, I'm struggling right now. You know, I may be struggling, but my best friends are here cheering me on and I know I'm going to get through this and I want to make it to that next event. I want um, to be a part of this culture. And so not only the product, but getting them um, that relationship because so many new distributors I've noticed, they stick with this because they're lonely. They're so lonely. Think of being a stay-at-home mom. Like, we're lonely. We're in the house a lot. So having those connections is really important. Yes, I love that. And one thing, too, is, like you said, since we're not all – well, I love that we're not all on the same team. And like you said, we kind of just all connected. It was like I always tell Susan, he's like, love that first sight. When I saw her, I was like, oh, my God, I love her. Um, and so – and then going to events and building those relationships even deeper. And uh, we just got to spend time in Nashville. Susan had us at our house, and we literally just had the best weekend – and just making that like a girls weekend slash work weekend. So many adult women, they don't have that at all. Like um, a lot of women, like you said, are very lonely. They're like, no one relates to me, no one understands. And so if you can find, and I, I love doing that with my newbies, is I kind of like match personalities. And then, you know, obviously it's not up to me to be like, be friends, but I kind of just put them in threads together. And literally y'all, they just take off. Like they, um, I've got a couple girls. I didn't even know that they live within like an hour and a half of each other. They're just my newbies that I enrolled last month. And I kind of just paired them in little threads and they all met for lunch last weekend. I was like, be still my heart. They all like connected. They're all coming to conference. It's like so special that they're building this relationship. And it again, helps them to stay accountable and say like, you guys, I'm having a rough week. Help me, you know? And that's what friendships are for. And this goes for men too. I know we have some yeah. men on here. I mean, my Absolutely. husband, going to events and meeting the other husbands and support it, you know, people that are working the business too. Like that's really important. Yes. It's just as important for them as well. You know, we realized this weekend, I, th I think that the key, the key component to all of that is finding someone that has something that you admire or appreciate or love. I think the three of us can all agree that there's something about the way that each one of us work our businesses and live our lives that we admire, we respect about each other. And so when we're being accountable to each other and just kind of holding each other that high standard is, is helpful because we can not only support each other on a business level, but in our life and in our families and all of that stuff. So I, I realized this weekend people were starting to kind of match together. They were all, of course, diamond and above, and they were starting to match together. Okay, you know, you have this strength and you have this strength, so we should partner together and really help each other keep accountable to this next level in our business. And I find that you find that, you know, when you are connected and go to events and stay plugged in and, you know, um, asking, asking your upline for that, you know, just being, being communicative with your upline about who you think that 
I would partner well with and just being open about that. So I can, I'm getting it. I know I'm, I'm hearing it too. All right, I'm going to go mute. Uh, Susan, ask the next question. Okay. Um, let's talk about power hours and organization. They were really curious. About that. Okay. Like as far as like how many power hours we do or how we organized ourselves or what? Well, I'll let y'all talk more power hours. I'll real quickly just talk about how I organize. You mentioned, Kay, your notes app. The notes app like saves my life um, every single day because, you know, although I want to stay personal, using the same type of wording for whether it's describing what it means to be a loyal customer, describing the business, how we make money, I have those notes saved in my phone to where if I have my kids crawling all over me and I get a text message from someone interested in the business, I can easily copy and paste and, and still move throughout my day. I'm not stuck behind a desk um, in those moments. Um, of course, we want to have those intentional one to two hours two to four hours, depending on, you know, your next promotion, but having those intentional hours is important, but let's be real. If you're a mommy or maybe you're, you're at work or whatever it is, having those, those saved notes. Um, and this doesn't need to be scripts you've gotten from your upline. This can be your own personal, like, what are you saying in your own words? Every single time someone asks, what's a loyal customer, save that, that message in your notes app. Um, the second thing I'm going to talk about is like my calendar. That's how I follow up. Some people use, um, a, like a actual written out calendar or a notepad, whatever it is for you to stay organized with your follow-ups. Cause every single day I'm following up every single day. I'm writing down people's names or typing out people's names of new Facebook ads, people that I'm really focused on. Um, that's some way to keep organized with me on my calendar. I can move people. Um, I can move them to Friday. I follow up with them on Friday. I'll move them to the next day. If they ignore me, things like that. Um, my Apple calendar is, is, super organized you can color code but a lot of people are don't use you know calendars and phones so you can use an, a written out calendar if you want um so that's kind of more on how i follow up um i use some people ask well how often do you follow up i think it depends on the person but usually i use the um the two 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 rule so two days two weeks two months if they're continuously ignoring me but Honestly, if it's a rock star person, like in my gut, I feel like they're great at this business. If I follow up two days and they ignore me, I'm not going to wait another two weeks to follow up with them. I don't want to lose them. So you can kind of get a feel as you're talking to someone if, if they're just completely checked out. Some people don't check their Facebook Messenger. So I make sure they know that I'm, I want them. I'm interested in them. They're going to kill this business. Um, so following up is super important. My, my mom was having a conversation with Christina Watts recently, and she had, she had admitted that she has just kind of fallen off in her enrollments, not completely, just kind of fallen back and lot, that life happens, right? But she realized she wasn't being consistent. She wasn't eliminating distractions. She wasn't putting on her headphones as we call it and just getting that focused hour. And so she went to power hours and we teach these on our team. I put a link on the chat. You guys want to quickly put that in your notes section. Um, if not, you can find it on my YouTube channel, but I, I did a how to on power hours, just a quick for my team. And then I loaded it up and we have, um, we have, um, uh, two different ones. We have one that we do that's like now. It's it's this time of day. It's noonish. That um, Heather Juno's a triple diamond on our team. She runs these for us consistently, and these are more engagement. We find that this time of day is better for engagement. And what we mean by that is, is if you're utilizing social media, um, it's not as much follow up because we find that people are at work. As we know that follow up is better at night. I know as a mom, as soon as Kennedy goes to bed, that's like my go-to time for work. And we want to respect that, right? We're all pretty much on the same, you know, because a lot of people that we're following up with are moms too. And they've got, they're putting the kiddos down and they can have their phone in their hand and not be distracted. And so the, the noonish times that we do our power hours are more engagement. And there's, um, there's some information on that on that video. And then the ones that we do at night around nine o'clock, that is all like follow up. That is where we send our messages to our market. That's where we, um, right. She does rock the power. She's so good at it and um, really goes through in depth uh, on what to do on social media 
And she also focuses on building booking parties too. You know, she's one that you'll find she'll put up a sampling party at a Starbucks and sample the keto coffee and the protein. And she's good at one-on-ones too, but she's also focusing on building on social media. So for those of you, no matter how you build your business, you, you're going to learn a lot from that. And so we'll make sure I know Susan, I've seen it on your team page. You've posted the, 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 the power hours before. So we want to make sure that we all have them and are, are, are getting those to you again. Because Shout out to Meredith Doster, my triple diamond. She, yeah. I don't know if she comes up with them or she finds them somewhere, but she is at, she's like so detailed. It's insane. And she's so perfect when it comes to organizing the day and okay, this is your task for the day. I love her. I have to shout her yeah, out. Because if you guys aren't setting aside that time, then it's five o'clock and you go, what have I done today? And I feel like, um, you know, when uh, mom was reading, there's a great book called Get Over Your Damn Self. Look, I have it right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. You guys read this book. Written by a network marketer, highly successful in the industry. And she talks about how, you know, we're, there's a common misconception that we work just while our kids are napping. That's the vision we paint. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're working, our kiddos are napping and we're working and we're like, really, we're it, really not really, really, if you want to be successful at this, you have to be disciplined in your approach. You have to give it solid focused attention because you know, when you don't, things fall off. But when you do and say, look, I need to just put my blinders on. And for this hour, I've got to stay focused. You put your phone on, do not disturb. You don't answer the doorbell. You don't answer your text messages. You are so focused for that hour. And I feel like that's the difference between, you know, you know where you're at now and where you want to go is, is being extremely focused on, on your work. Oh my gosh, my child. Right, uh, you over your, who's that by? Yeah. Oh, here it is, baby. Someone was asking. Right here. Yeah. Get over your damn self. Um, and that goes, we were asked that question, like leadership books. That's perfect. That answers that. Um, this tip just like came in my head and I remember, I think it was Erin Tweed that did a zoom with me. She said that when she wakes up in the mornings that she actually puts her phone on airplane mode and she'll send out her, um, either her follow-ups or her warm or cold messages to people. Cause she doesn't want to get a response. Like she just wants to send them and, and not like have any distraction. Like Kay said, so she'll turn her airplane mode airplane mode, then she'll wake up, she'll get her coffee, she'll take care of her little boy, she'll kind of do some things the next hour. Then when she turns her airplane mode back on, those messages have sent out, she can then start responding. So yeah, it's really up to you. Mm -hmm. If you're distracted easily, that's a perfect tip. Well, and I feel like the way you start your, this is for me, the way you start your morning, your day is pretty much how the rest of my day is going to go. If I start it like unproductive, then it's going to be pretty much a wash of a day. Right. Um, but literally if I, I set up intentional, like every morning I don't pick up my phone until I have filled myself up first because I can't pour from an empty cup. So I listen to like either my devotion or I read a devotion, listen to Stephen Furtick, Tony Robbins, whatever to like pump me up for the day. And then I'm like, okay, I'm here. I, I'm like checking in. And then, cause I know once I pick up that phone, you're basically you'll answer one thing and it, it turns into a couple hours. Um, but just intentionally uh, feeling yourself up first. And then I do like 15 minutes of intentional work. And it's so simple, you guys. I literally will like go and write in the morning after I've like filled myself up. Um, and I'll go like wish everybody on my timeline a happy birthday. That's like a simple thing for engagement. I'll go because I'm like obsessed with babies and kids. I'll like go. Um, if people are posting things, like I'll purposely go comment. And it's like me being like, oh, my heart, bring me that baby. Seriously. Um, but just engaging with people that aren't in the business because I want my potentials to be, see my status is my Post. I don't post for it works distributors. They're already in the business. I post for my potentials. Um, and I feel like I've been guilty. And I actually told my team this that sometimes we make this look too easy because the truth is it's not easy. I mean, right. it, it takes work like anything in life is worth it. It's not hard. Uh, it's a very simple business, but definitely not easy. Like last night, my husband went to bed at like 10 o'clock. He's like, I'm tired of a softball game. I was like, oh, okay. And I literally was like, like this last night, just working away. I was like, must be nice to be able to go to bed right at 10, but it's okay. Cause then I woke up this morning and I've got two girls that want to join me today. So those seeds that I planted last night until 2 AM, uh, are so worth it because now I've got uh, phone dates with them today and they're going to be joining my business. And so I do my best work at night when the world is like quiet and I can like, you know, get, gather my thoughts and follow up with people. But I also plant seeds and like lay down the work throughout the day too. Um, I have one little tip that I want to give for Facebook. Oh, she like just jumped. Um, 
look at this little hand. Um, okay, so on Facebook, if I'm sucked into Facebook and I'm like liking and commenting on all my friends, like my It Works distributors, mm -hmm. I remind myself to click most recent on my Facebook timeline. And I don't know with the algorithm, most recent shows me like mm -hmm. these random people that I've never even seen or heard about. They're usually potentials I've added that I've kind of fallen through the cracks or whatever. So, and they're really like random stuff, but I will like them. I'll like their share videos. I'll like anything for a name that I don't recognize, um, whatever it is. And that usually will start my, it, it like fixes my algorithm in a way. For me, I've noticed that. Um, and kind of keeps me on track. So I try to do that often. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I do the same thing. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm seeing a lot of black, green, and bling. Where are my peeps at? Like, my potentials. And so that's when I'm like, what have I done? Oh my gosh, I cannot. I will be holding her all throughout conference. So just, just want to give everyone a little shout out there. If you see me that I'll be holding Channing the entire time. Because um, I'm just a easy whisperer. She's delicious. But yeah, that's an awesome tip. I like that, Susan. Um, yeah, we, we talk about that at our power hours. You guys have to be more intentional about where you're spending your time on your news feeds, no matter what, because you know what, if you do it, like, I remember when I first started adding requested friends on Facebook, I had like 980,000 requested friends were like, it works distributors. And there was like one that was not. And I realized, oh, this is my problem because I wasn't focusing on building outside of that. I just had this amazing network of it works people and not anything. So once I started adding one by one requested friends that were not at works people, slowly but surely that requested friends list started to change and it was less and less at works people and more and more, you know, friends and a new network. So that really helps too. So you just kind of have to start. You have to just start this process so that you, um, you change that algorithm for yourself and, and start benefiting from it the most. Yep, definitely. Because again, they're already in the business. So why do you want to have the same people seeing yourself? Like the whole reason if you're building on social media is to grow your business throughout social media. And that's with potentials. Um, and so I always tell my team, do it, do a check, like a timeline check. And if you see a bunch of black, green and bling, there's nothing wrong with like unfollowing. Um, and then just going and making those connections so that they show up on your feed again. Of course, I will comment on like my new distributors. Oh, yeah. Um, only because like you're helping their business. Um, a lot of times in our team, like smaller team chats will say, hey, can you give some love on my posts? We don't do it a lot because you don't want it to be like every single hour. But um, it, it's good to help out your fellow team members because they'll in turn help you out. And these are posts like, like yesterday I made a post saying um, it was the one that was like, you know, wraps will never go out of style. Like moms are always having babies. And then I just wrote comment below with your favorite before and after picture. Those are the type of posts. Like if you can get your team to help you out and you in turn can help them out, it, it helps the algorithm. Oh, yeah. Um, but again, don't just comment on it works distributors all day long. Your algorithm is going to be completely messed up. Um, and real quick, cause I know Kay's got to leave, but the international distributor question, um, I think, getting international distributors is the same way you would get just a normal distributor. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm constantly adding people, I'm going to people's profiles. I'm, I'm kind of recruiting in a way. And so I'm forming those relationships in the same way. What do y'all think? I agree. I feel like everyone's like, what's the secret uh, to getting international? I'm like, there is no secret. It's the same thing. And same thing with people are like, I want to grow more men on my team or, you know, a certain kind of fitness person, or whatever. I'm like, it's the same thing. Um, I always say too, like, I know, so I know it's great to grow international and things like that, but you guys have to remember, do your neighbors even know what you do? Mm -hmm. Like check your own backyard before you're so, uh, like worried about connecting with like international and all that, like make sure. Cause I was so guilty of this. I'm like, my neighbors didn't even know what I did now they do, but I was like, they didn't even know. They thought that I was like some trophy wife sitting out here just chilling and, and Steven was doing all this. I'm like, uh, um, no, I'm a boss babe over here. Um, and so it's super important, like to also grow your network in your very own backyard within your and peers. That things. can lead you to an international oh, shooter. Sure. We have Christian oh. Carter who's our, our presidential diamond, he's on here along with some of his diamonds. And Christian actually came from um, an upline that came from someone in my downline that lives over in Knoxville, Tennessee, Crystal Tyler. So you never know that your next door neighbor could have connections in Germany or whatever. So don't count anybody out. Like, don't just think, oh, I need to focus in Norway because I know that someone's going crazy in Norway right now. 
Um, and same thing goes for you Norway distributors. Like someone could have a U.S. connection that could blow your whole business. So yeah, and I think it's important for us to remember we are so connected here in the U.S. We are okay, honey. Thank you. We are so connected here in the U.S. We have one team, one missions. We have our boot camps. We have conference. We have green carpet. So so does international. And what you guys need to make sure that you do, and this is what we, we encourage with our team, is get your new distributors that are international plugged into events. You know, like for me to go to Tennessee does not take that far via air, right? I can get to Susan's like this. It's no different international. The, the difference is that the countries are like states. They're closer together. And so it's, it's not much for a person in Germany to go to an event in France. It doesn't take a lot for them to be able to accomplish that. So you just have to remember that if you haven't been international, those are things you may not realize or know or understand, but we have a tremendous international support system. I mean, Kenzie and Albert are phenomenal. They are, they are the cream of the crop in getting people plugged in together and making sure that they're well-trained, well taken care of. They know to build the culture and build the belief level up there. So if you need help in that arena, if you need help there, we will help you so much. So do you go to Kinsey and Albert? I know, Trisha, you have an international team starting there. Um, one thing that I will make sure that I do for you personally, since we work together, is to make sure that you're connected to them. Albert is phenomenal. They do parties. They do events. They make sure that they're well taken care of because it's super important to them that they make sure they grow the international market. So if you have individual um, questions or you know ideas of what how you want to build over there then go to your go directly to your diamond and above upline go to one of us because we're here to help you um, get those connections made um, for sure so um, what else did I want to add to that let's see I don't think anything on international nope I'm good one last question Susan, do you have one more that you want to ask? On this yeah. Question? So on my list, it looks like the last question was how to send the first warm, cold message, which I think they wrote it like that because cold messaging sometimes is um, misconstrued. Um, some people will just spam all day long and it just is kind of embarrassing and they're not forming relationships at all. Now it's okay to send that first message that talks about it works. It's totally fine to do that. I just think that, there needs to be other factors involved, like your profile picture needs to look like you. Um, your your Facebook and Instagram um, bio needs to be normal. It doesn't need to look like you're just all around 100% rap girl, like super spammy um, advertisement. So if you're going to send that first message, which Katie Sullivan, um, if you... Uh, if, if someone has that link to Katie Sullivan's Instagram video that they could post in the chat, that would be amazing. Her video is awesome and it talks a lot about how to message your potentials. Um, so it's okay to send those messages. I just think that there needs to be um, a personal approach to it. There needs to be other factors. Um, like I talked about um, your social media presence. So when they go to your profile, they can see that you're, you know, either a college student um, and you post like going out with your friends or you're a mom and you still post about your kids. Like there's all these different things. So Katie, for example, she can send that first message to someone on Instagram saying, Hey, you know, I've given you, I've looked at your profile. I think you do great at this. And yes, it, that is a cold message, but because of the way she portrays herself online, I think it works. So don't be afraid to send out messages. I think a lot of this business is always asking, not just posting. Um, but I will say a lot of the way that I work my business is adding people and getting to know them for the first like week or two. I write their names down, I comment, I like their stuff. And then I send that first message saying, hey, I've given you a lot of, um, Tension. I've seen your profile. I think you do great at this. Have you ever considered it? And that's when voice memos really come in handy because they get to know me. Do y'all have Nicole? Do you have anything to add about that? Thank yeah, you. I, for, I, I, someone posted in this um, chat. This video is incredible. It has been yeah. in all of our leadership pages. Katie Sullivan, we love you. Yes. Thank you for that. But literally, that changed the game because I think there's a very fine line between being spammy. Hey, um, Scott. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, between being spammy and actually being authentic. And so while there's nothing wrong with asking someone or saying like, I need you on this journey with me, you would rock this with me. Um, same way like we pick friends and spouses and anything like that, you can pick people, handpick people to be on your team. But what we don't wanna ever be is like spammy and um, not authentic and just cutting and pasting and not who we are. And so that's where I'm always like, you know, we don't spam, but we do message, we connect, we ask, we invite. And that's what our job is. We invite, we lay out the tools, we give them all the information and then it's up to them to say, you know what? Yeah, I accept. Um, almost like dating is what I say. Like you, whenever you're dating, you don't like, you kind of tuck in the crazy a little bit, you know, until they really get to know you. So I'm always like, y'all tuck in the crazy. And then after they've joined them, we're like, Whoa! you know, but before that, we kind of <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> and shout out to um, Crystal Tyler, because she, I hope she's okay with me sharing this, but I think for a while on a lot of the VIP pages, like cold messaging just got a really bad rap. It did. And yeah. It did. Like people just said, do not message anybody. Like right. it's all about attraction marketing. And she admitted that for a while she stopped messaging people and her recruitment went down and she's like, you know what? I'm going to get back to what got me here and I'm going to start messaging people. I'm going to start asking. And I think a lot of, and I, feel the same way. Like I felt that vibe. Like I was almost scared to, sh to shoot messages out to people. You guys don't be scared. But, but like Nicole said, like I said, there's a way to go about it and there's a way to present yourself and to be authentic, you know, use their name, you know, say like, Hey, Michelle, you know, don't just copy and paste over and over and over. No. And I think also too, like, it's so important to follow the right cat. Because some people will think like, oh, well, this person said to do this. Are you following the right cat? Like, you got to make sure you're following the right person. Um, and when you do that and you start seeing the fruits of your labor and you start seeing your business boom, then you know that that's a technique that's going to work for you. But again, right. make sure you're being yourself. Don't sit there and just copy paste 50 messages of the same thing. Cause yeah, Patrice just said, I was scared of being blocked. Well, you yeah. won't be blocked if you're like if you're not sending the exact same message over and over and over and over, like Facebook picks up on those things. Um, that's why Katie Sullivan hasn't completely like put out all of her scripts because she knows that if we start using her or some, just the wrong person gets a hold of that message, then it's going to start changing things for her business. So that's why you've got to find your personal message, change it up. Don't just send the same one over and over. Um, again, I mentioned this, Find that little piece of something about them that you can talk about to make your message seem like, okay, she's not just sending this message to like 25 other people today. Like she actually did look at my profile and be careful. You guys, if you're saying, oh my gosh, I looked at your profile. You'd be so good at this. And then they write back. Yeah, I'd be good at this. I'm a presidential diamond top oh, money. It is so embarrassing when that happens to you guys, but it does. I get messages all the time and it's okay to make that mistake. I try to be really, really nice. I say, you know what? I'm actually already in the business, but thank you for considering me. You may want to look at profiles, you know, so don't make that mistake. Right. I mean, again, if you're honestly looking through someone, I think between the, like, if you look five to six pictures, you're like, okay, they're obviously a distributor or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the worst. Like that's embarrassing. Um, I got a message yesterday saying that I'd be an amazing distributor. I'm like, thanks. That's why I am. <laughs> and I have been for five years. Um, and again, I do the same thing. I'm like, boo, you got to look. Um, and you know, I'm like, who are you with? Really, you have to read the captions yeah. too, because honestly, if you're doing posting the right way, it's not going to look like a rap girl advertisement. Like you've got to read the captions. We may be posting opportunity posts with, you know, holding my kids. Like if you read my captions, you would know. Right. So you, you can't be lazy. You can't be lazy yeah. in this business. And then that's the biggest thing too, with this business, there is the lazy will not survive. Like it's if you think that you're just going to sign up for $99 and the Mark's going to come knocking on your door and give you a $10,000 bonus. I'm like, I wish, but that's just not the way it works. And so, especially now with this Christmas cash all, like we are in control of this right now. You can't blame your team. Can't blame your upline, your downline. It is up to you to see, say how much money you're going to earn because it's based on your efforts, which I love. I think yeah. that is genius that they're doing that right now. And it's the perfect time of year. Everybody needs extra income right now. So it's like, we're so grateful that this is the opportunity that you can talk to someone today and say, Hey, do you need an extra 500 bucks for Christmas? This is what you have to do. And you can make that in a week, two weeks, this month paid out cash. And people are like, what? Um, I know when I first started like $500, I would have been like, 
I won the lottery because we literally had every penny accounted for. Um, and so just be really mindful. It, it doesn't matter how long you've been in. Everybody's journey is different. I love what Pam posted today that some people are like, well, it's great for, you know, top leaders and top earners to show like this lavish lifestyle. But whenever I started, I would show that I paid for date night. I would show that, oh my gosh, you guys, I got my nails done today and it wasn't on credit, <laughs> you know? Like, let's just be real, I had to put that, I had to put my Manny, my Petty on credit cards. Um, but just to be able to pay cash for that, because your fast starts, because your Christmas cash, that's gonna be relatable to people. Thanksgiving dinner, super expensive, y'all. Um, and so just saying like, thank you, it works, picked up my grocery tab, my gas, things like that. It doesn't have to be lavish. It just, everyday little things that someone can connect with will make all the difference. Right. Well, this has been so awesome, you guys. We'll definitely have to do this again. We so appreciate you guys. We loved your questions. Um, we will definitely. I eat Nicole. To, I, I, can't I love you so much. Honey. Me up for this. Oh my gosh. I love her. Mm, I love her. She's so delicious. We all have. Oh my gosh. I cannot Stop deal. Me. She's so mad at me. She's like, Stop it. She's like, Mama. Um, all right. Well, we will definitely do a part two. I know Kay's on her way to shoot that some mom duties. I'm heading to lunch. Yeah, so it may be a little while for the recording, but we'll get that posted today. Yeah, for sure. We appreciate you guys. We love y'all. Oh, there she is. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye, guys.